herpes zoster, also known as shingles, is the topic. And what's important to understand is that you have a virus known as varicella zoster. And that virus, that I will abbreviate VZV, is the cause of chickenpox. And that's in its acute phase. Now what happens is, later on, approximately I'd say 10 to 20 percent of cases, the varicella zoster virus can reactivate. And when it does, it causes shingles. So very important to remember that distinction. And shingles is just another name for herpes zoster. So don't get confused with these terms. Just understand what the name of the virus is and what the name of the actual disease is. So what is herpes zoster? Herpes zoster, or shingles, is essentially a rash. And the rash involves the skin over a dermatome. And if you're not sure what a dermatome is, you can look up diagrams of this on the internet if you have somebody's back, let's say. A dermatome is an area of the skin that kind of represents a band or, or stripe across. So this would be one dermatome, this would be another dermatome. So the rash, if it affects a dermatome, it'll kind of look like that. It'll be a, a band-like rash across the body, either the, the back or the chest. So what are the symptoms? The symptoms are actually pretty characteristic. The pain that is associated with shingles is pretty profound. It's even described as piercing. It's can, it can be described as stabbing or even stinging. Severe pain associated with this rash. Now the appearance of the rash is also very characteristic. It's these crops of vesicles on a red base, erythematous base. And perhaps the most common uh, thing that they mention in clinical vignettes is the fact that it's along a dermatome. Even if they don't mention the word dermatome, they will imply it by saying band-like, you know, uh, rash. So. If you have a person and they've got a rash on their body, the rash will be involving a band. And there's very characteristic uh, photos of this that I encourage you to look up, most commonly on the person's back, but also it can be found on the chest or face as well. In terms of diagnosis, really just the nature of the rash, you know, I, I, keep, I keep drawing it, but you know, it's really, if you see a rash that kind of appears right along the dermatome, you know, it's very characteristic. The severe uh, pain that's involved and also the quality of the pain, so, such as piercing, stabbing, stinging, and also, um, of course, the location and the nature of it, the band-like distribution. So the the fact that the rash is usually a crop of vesicles so the way it looks in terms of its uh, uh, appearance in the description of the pain and then of course the location so those are very characteristic findings and those are really that's all that's involved most of the time in the diagnosis in terms of treatment antivirals are the cornerstone of treatment and those antivirals include acyclovir which is very common valcyclovir which is a little more expensive gancyclovir so as you can see they all have the same ending and they're all antivirals one uh, final point I wanted to mention before I look at the clinical vignettes is there's something very important known as postherpetic neuralgia basically what this is is that it's persistent pain that uh, stays with the patient after shingles resolves and the reason is because what's happened is the nerve 
that the virus affected has been destroyed and that is causing this persistent pain. So that varicella zoster virus has damaged this particular nerve and in addition to p severe pain after the shingles has resolved they also have symptoms of allodynia. Allodynia essentially means that you have pain with non-painful stimuli. So a perfect example of that is even touching the area lightly can cause pain or even putting on clothes where the clothes rub up against that area can cause pain. Taking a shower when the water hits that area can cause pain. This is obviously very uh, troublesome and the treatment involves um, giving certain medications. One of the most helpful medications is an antidepressant, interestingly, known as amitriptyline. And then another medication that's used uh, with a benefit is gabapentin. So those two medications have been used to treat post-herpetic neuralgia. Now let's take a look at some clinical vignettes. 55-year-old man complains of stinging pain for three days in the facial area involving the right forehead from beneath the scalp anteriorly and as low as the level of the right eye, seemingly out of proportion to a red rash he notes that is appearing today. The area of erythema involves a band that matches the area of pain reported by the patient. Exam reveals a 1-3 to three millimeter vesicles on the right cheek against an erythematous background, which of the following is most likely diagnosis. Well, they describe the pain as stinging, they characterize it as a band, and they talk about vesicles on a red base. That's all characteristic of herpes zosters, which is also known as shingles. Next question. 71-year-old man with osteoarthritis comes to the office complaining of a painful band-like rash across his left chest. He denies ever having a similar rash before, plays golf three times per week, takes only NSAIDs for pain from his arthritis. Temperature is 98. On his left ch ch chest, in the T5 dermatomal distribution, is a macular papular erythematous rash that is painful to touch. There's a mild weeping of some of the papules. Most appropriate therapy is. Well, the fact that they mentioned dermatome really gives it away. And of course, we're talking about shingles, herpes zoster, and the treatment involves antivirals. So the antiviral in this question, right here, again, cyclovir. And then finally, 66-year-old woman comes to the clinic complaining of severe pain across her chest and abdomen. You treated the patient for shingles five months ago, and at that time, she had a shingles band at the T8 level. The current pain is in the same region where she had her shingles. She states that she cannot stand to have her clothes touch the area, and even shower water hurts. She has hypertension and glaucoma for which she takes beta blocker and lisinopril. At the level of her T8 dermatome on the right she has marked allodynia, primary and secondary hyperalgesia. The area of the area is exceptionally tender to palpation the most appropriate therapy is. Okay well this is an excellent question. Uh, she had shingles five months ago and now she has post herpetic neuralgia and they talk about the allodynia. Allodynia of course is just a situation where uh, even non-painful stimuli are causing pain. So that's uh, described here with this uh, clothes touching the area and the shower water also touching the area. And then they also describe something called hyperalgesia. What that means is that um, tissue surround surrounding tissues also have pain as well. So the treatment for post neuralgia basically involves certain medications. One of them is an antidepressant known as amitriptyline and another one that's commonly used is gabapentin. And in this um, question they have amitriptyline. Lidocaine cream uh, is sometimes used but its uh, benefits are very minimal so that's why it's not the best most appropriate uh, therapy at this time.